Hi guys, Chris here again from A Different Approach Tuition Limited, and today we're going to be learning how to do receipts and payments accounts for non-profit organizations. All right. Before I get into the work, I just want to say a special shout out to my 24 subscribers. Hi guys, um, thanks for following me. For those of you who may be new here, um, I upload, well, I've only uploaded two videos so far, this is my third, but I teach math, accounts and add math to CSEC students, and I plan to upload content to cover all of those things um, in the coming, well, well, going forward, right? I'm, I'm not hoping, I'm hoping not to stop, all right? So um, before I get into the actual teaching, so Monday I uploaded a video that, that covered a topic called incomplete records, a very small piece of it. But I found out the day after that incomplete records is no longer on the CSEC syllabus. So that was my bad. So today, before I get into this topic, what I want to do is I want to pull up the syllabus and show you guys where this topic is, all right? So give me one sec. All right, here we go. So this is the CSEC Principles of Accounts Syllabus Extract. And as you can see, so let me just make this a bit easier. Let's pull up the search bar, nonprofit. So next. So as you can see, it's highlighted here. Um, it says section nine. All right. The next occurrence of this is, right? This is the table of contents. So it says section nine again. So let's keep going, right? Organization of syllabus. Right, section two, accounting as a system. So you basically have to appraise the accounting features, advantages, disadvantages, that kind of stuff. All right. Um, okay, we're in section nine now. So we're gonna take a look and see what we have to know. Essential features, non-profits. Um, <clears throat> okay, so you guys seeing where that blue highlight is going? Okay, so down here, um, it says prepare receipts and payment accounts for non-profit organizations preparation of receipts and payments accounts only right so that's the only aspect of this topic you have to know right um, it's also down there that's just some extra stuff right so non-profit organizations okay cool all right so no more matches so as you guys can see I've been through the whole syllabus that's the most recent one from the CSEC web cxe.org website uh, please feel free to go there and download it it's a little tricky to find sometimes but uh, maybe I'm just I'm just bad at searching sometimes I don't know right Okay, so um, the first thing I want to talk about is what, well, what is a nonprofit organization? Um, as the name implies, it's an entity that does not hold profit making as its primary objective, right? There are some organizations that, yes, they do go after profit primarily, but there are also some that, that don't, right? They may just be, um, we call them clubs, right? So, for example, there could be a cricket club in your area, a football club, maybe an all force club, and these clubs don't really earn money by selling goods or services, but the members pay maybe membership fees, right? The technical term that you would find in the syllabus and in textbooks is subscriptions, okay? So that was also a part of this topic. Uh, the content I used to have to teach for nonprofits was receipts and payments accounts, um, income and expenditure accounts, bar trading accounts. We also used to have to sometimes do control accounts. Uh, and of course, balance sheets, and there's a bunch of terminology that you have to learn that goes with this particular topic. Okay, now let me just minimize this and pull up the question. Right, so the question I'm going to be working with today is Miracle Charity Group. This is the January 2017 question. Now, just to give you guys a brief idea about how often this particular topic comes on the exam. So I have here my master pass paper list. So what I do is every time I get a pass paper, I basically update, update this Excel file to show in that particular year, uh, what, what question, what topic came in which question from questions one to five, right? Um, as you know, or maybe if you don't, if you don't know, from 2017 come forward, the exam is just five compulsory questions. Prior to that, you used to have two sections. Sections Questions one to three were three compulsory questions. You had no choice but to do those questions. Questions four to seven were, well, there were four questions and you had to choose any two to do, right? So what I've done is I've done a bit of um, conditional formatting to show you guys via highlighting how often this topic came and where. So in 2016, 15, and 14, it came in question five, six, and six respectively, which means it was a choice question. Right in 2016, it was pretty detailed statement of affairs, subscriptions account, bar trading account. So a lot of stuff to do there. Right in 2015, it was non-profit, was just subscriptions. Here was just interpretation. Um, not entirely sure what that means right now, but um, <laughs> we'll get back to that. Now let's see where else it came. Ooh, hold on, went a bit too quickly there. 
20, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, it did not come. That's quite a few years. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So there's a, a bit of a gap between 2007 and that other year, right? So it came in 07, 06, 05, 04. It skipped 03. It came in 2002. I apparently don't have 2001. It came in 1999. I think it came in 98. That's the year I did, I did see, actually. So maybe it did, right? No, that's the... That's the May paper. So as you can see, it did not come for quite a while and it hasn't come in the recent past either. Actually, yeah. <laughs> and then in January, well, it didn't come in January 2019. It came in 2018, 2017. All right. Um, skip 16 and 15. 14 it came. 13 it came. Skip 12, skip 11. Came in 2010, 2009. And I only have up to 2007 with the January past papers, right? So I'm just going to minimize that window. All right, so as you can see, it's not a topic that is tested too often, but it does come. And when it does come, you need to know how to do what you have to do. So thankfully, you don't have to know as much about this topic as you used to in the past. Okay, so all we have to know how to do today is something called a receipts and payments account. A receipts and payments account is just a fancy name for a cash book or a bank account. That's all it is, right? The receipts and payments account, as the name implies, because receipts and payments. Receipts are on the debit side, payments are on the credit side, right? So inflows, receipts, outflows, payments, right? Now, like I said, I'm gonna use the Miracle Charity, the Jan 2017 question to facilitate teaching you guys how to do this topic, right? Um, so of course, there are gonna be things inside of here that are not entirely relevant to what we have to do, so we're just gonna pick out the applicable part, right? So Miracle Charity Group is a non-trading organization which provides temporary shelter for persons who have lost their homes. Okay. On 1st September 2015, the 300 members of Miracle Charity Group owned the following assets and liabilities. So we have some assets and liabilities here. All right, bank overdraft. All right, so nothing here about receipts and payments, right? So foodstuff inventory is an asset. Shelter furniture is an asset. Government grants owing to the group, that's an asset as well. Shelter building assets. 15 members with subscriptions and arrears asset, wages owing, well, that's a liability, okay? Now, um, we don't want to do a balance sheet. We want to actually go a couple of pages down. Right, during the year ended, 31st August 2016, Miracle Charity Group recorded the following cash-based activities, okay? Purchased foodstuff, received full subscriptions, received arrears, received government grants, purchased new furniture, added 10 rooms to building, paid wages, paid for painting of old rooms, all right? And you are to prepare a receipts and payments account for Miracle Charity Group with the year ended 31st August 2016, okay? So, like I said, it's a relatively simple exercise. All you have to do is put all the receipts on this side, all the payments on this side, and balance it off, okay? Now, <clears throat> there is one item that is kind of missing from this set of information here, sorry. Right, which is the opening balance, which we saw back up on the first page, which was bank overdraft. Now, an overdraft means that you spent more money than you had in the bank. And essentially, what an overdraft really is, is a facility that you arrange with your banker where you are able to spend more money than you have in your bank account. Uh, so you might be asking, well, how is that possible? Well, remember, part of how the bank makes its money is by lending people money and charging them interest. Right, so any opportunity the bank has to make money, it's going to do so, right? And it's well within its right if it's a profit making organization, it's not a non profit organization, which is what we're studying today, right? So, <clears throat> when we pre arrange this facility with our bank and we go into overdraft, we essentially owe the bank money, and that means how do we classify that, therefore? Well, that means that the bank is now technically well, the overdraft is a liability. And liabilities have balances brought down on the credit side. The balance brought down, <clears throat> which is an overdraft, is 13400 All right, so we have that figure there. Next, what do we do? Well, let's go back to where we have the receipts and payments. All right, during the year ended 31st, okay, so purchase foodstuff. So a purchase is a payment, not so. So it's going to go here. So we can put foodstuff. I don't think we have to put purchase because if it's on the credit side, we should know it's a payment and we pay for purchases. All right. Received full subscriptions from 275 members. Once it says received, guess which side is going to go on? The receipt side. There you go. So we're going to put um, subscriptions. 
subscriptions, right? Uh, 222750. All right. Received the rares from Temel. So, a rares basically, that's where people did not pay their subscriptions on time and they paid it late. All right. So, a rares, four subscriptions. Um, all right. Subscriptions. Cool. And I was 8100. Okay. Received government grants. All right. So, let's go. So, government grants. How much is that? 83, 59, whoops, 595. Next, purchase new furniture. So, furniture goes on this side, furniture. All right, so that's 12, 4, 4, 5. Added 10 rooms to building. So, this is where we basically paid to construct extra rooms. So, that's a payment, right? So, what we can do is we can put down building additions. Oops, I spelled additions wrong, didn't I? Okay. So, um, just very quickly, if you're ever not entirely sure what to put for the details for any particular transaction, just put what they, they've given you in question, right? If you could summarize it so it fits a little better, that'd be great, right? But you don't always have to write it verbatim, okay? So, building additions, where was it? 98,000, whoops, that's 89. All right, after 98,000 paid, we, so once, it's, once it says paid, it's a payment, right? Wahil, wahil. Right, wages um, 45, 865. Uh, we have paid for painting of all rooms, so painting of rooms. We have 1675. Okay, and now all we have to do is balance this off and see what's going on. So, just uh, let me just cheat a little bit. So, here, that's about 230, that's about 313,000. Across here, we don't have that much. That's about 265. Now, I'm not adding all that in my head, by the way, I can, right? But um, what you're not seeing on the screen is Excel at the bottom here has a little, um, a little total, okay? So I know that my balance will be carried on from this side, will be equal to the total from the debit side minus the total from the credit side. All right, and all we have to do now is balance it off. Boom, 49,380. All right, um, balance brought down is equal to that same 49,380. Okay, so there you have it. So yeah, so today's video went a bit longer than the other two, um, but I did give a bit more details before. So I'm hoping that those details you found valuable. All right, so <clears throat> like I said, so today we dealt with nonprofit organizations, which are organizations that they don't have profit as their main objective, profit maximization, okay? And what we learned to do with them, well, sorry, for them, sorry, was prepare or construct the receipts and payments account, which essentially is a cash book or a bank account. It's a T account that shows all the inflows, receipts, and outflows of cash or checks, right? We saw that there was an overdraft in this question, which is where at the start, the bank account is in basically a negative balance. You owe the bank which means it's a liability and will be, the balance will be brought down on the credit side. Okay, um, we took the information from here. Any payments went on the credit side, whoops. All right, any receipts went on the debit side and that was, we balanced it off and that was it, right? So that's basically all you have to know accounting wise for nonprofit organizations, right? Um, of course, I would encourage you to go and download the syllabus and take a read through to make sure that you've covered the topics and anything you haven't covered, you should probably try to take a look at before it's too late, okay? Anyhow, guys, so um, thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, um, please give that like button a hit. And if you wanna subscribe, please subscribe. Um, just very quickly, I wanna give a shout out and say thank you to Mr. Kerwin Springer, who has his own YouTube channel with a lot of great content. Um, he put it on his IG post, his IG story, for his students to check me out. So I'm just very grateful for that. So I hope I live up to you know, the expectations and I plan to do so. All right, guys. So once again, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.